Hi, this is Judith Karakson, Ian Manos Berlakis, and this is case 186 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of left main CTO that was complicated by stent loss. The patient presented with severe angina. He had previous coronary bypass craft surgery 19 years prior, and he had also undergone PCI of the left main 16 years prior with two taxus drug eluting stents. He was found to have a lesion into the right coronary artery that was successfully treated, but he also had a significant lesion in the mid-LAD that was filling retrograde through the radial graft. And this is the angiogram of the radial graft that is anastomosed to the diagonal branch, and then there is retrograde filling of the LAD that has a significant lesion immediately distal to the origin of the diagonal branch. The patient was referred for PCI of the left main CTO because it was considered extremely challenging to be able to deliver equipment through, through these two 180 degree bands. So we have a patient with a left main CTO. The proximal cap is uh, slightly ambiguous. We can kind of assess where the left main was originating. There is some calcification, but we do not have uh, a very clear proximal cap. The length is about 25 millimeters. There is a bifurcation on the distal cap where the diagonal takes off from the LED. And then there are there is the radial graft that supplies the diagonal branch. Based on this, our plan was to try undergrade wiring. If it didn't work, try retrograde crossing. And if that did not work, try ADR. ADR was the least preferred approach because of the bifurcation of the distal cap. So we first tried to engage the left main, which was challenging. We finally thought we positioned it at um, the flush osteal occlusion. And then we tried with the guy on next three, but we were unable to penetrate and actually uh, guide injection shows some subintimal staining, which uh, made us not want to do any more manipulations on the order, given that this guide is in the order. So we went retrograde. We used uh, a turnpike LP microcatheter. We also have uh, a guide extension. And then we did multiple attempts to cross retrograde through the stents. The stents uh, did provide, provide a good outline of where the occlusion was. However, it was an extremely challenging lesion to cross. Several wires, Gaia second, third, Gaia next, second and third, Gladius, Hornet 14, Confianza Pro 12 and Astato 20, all of those failed to cross. And this is not uncommon when we have a previous um, bypass graft because the distal cap is exposed essentially at systemic pressures which make the distal cap more calcified. Once again, we can see that the guide wires do not really make much progress. Um, we decided to try to put a wire to the distal LAD and bring in a dual lumen microcatheter to see if that would help us get a little more support. But um, we had uh, some difficulty getting the wire down. Uh, eventually, using multiple guide wires, uh, we were able to go through the proximal LED lesion and uh, successfully cross distally. Actually, the wire went into a second diagonal branch. We were able to reposition our guide wire and then advance the, the uh, microcatheter, the turnpike LP, all the way to the mid LED and then exchanged for the workhorse guide wire. We do have again a guide liner providing support and then here's a fine cross microcatheter. And then uh, now we do have the workhorse wire into the LED and we have a Sasuki dual loop microcatheter trying to penetrate the distal cap. This did provide additional support. We were able to push hard with the guide wires, but once again, we were unable to cross. And this view provides partial explanation as to why that is. We're coming from the diagonal, so we're actually trying to cross the previously placed left main stents and an angulation. We're not coming straight from the LAD, but from the diagonal, and this makes it much harder to penetrate to this heavily calcified tissue. After multiple attempts, we decided to make an attempt to see if we could actually treat the mid-LAD lesion through this highly tortuous um, radial graft. And after using multiple balloons, we were actually able to deliver a 2.0 millimeter Takeru balloon to the uh, mid LED, but the lesion was actually balloon undilatable in sync with the significant calcification we saw more proximally. 
who were able to deliver another 2.0 millimeter NC balloon, and we were then able to successfully expand the lesion. So here how this looks like after the predilatation. There is still a lesion, but the lesion is expanding well with balloon inflations. However, delivery was very challenging, despite having a guideliner and also despite having a body wire. So we placed a second wire. So we have two wires going down the radial graft, up the diagonal, and then down in the lady. You can see here the extreme tortuosity. We try to deliver a 2.5 by 15 millimeter drag eluting stand, but unfortunately we cannot deliver it. And then when we were trying to get it back into the guide, they came, the stand came off the balloon and uh, it was located at the distal anastomosis uh, of the radial graft. It was an Orsiro stand and those stands are a little harder to see and through fluoroscopy. We were trying to retrieve it and actually we lost our guide position. You can see here the guide is flying out. But we were able to fix this, we advanced the balloon into the radial graft, inflated it, and using this as anchor, we were then able to re-engage the radial graft. This is an Amplatz left guide, and again, this is a six French guideliner, providing some better support. We then tried to do attempts to retrieve the lost stent. We can see that the stent actually has gone past the distal anastomosis, essentially into the diagonal branch, but we could not get... Um, uh, balloons to get through. After multiple attempts, a 1.0 millimeter Sapphire Pro did cross, but then the stand could not come back. And presumably this happened because the stand was significantly deformed. Would I deliver a little larger balloon, 1.5 and 2.0, but could not get through the stand? I think part of it was the significant bend at which uh, the stand was located at. Again, multiple attempts, but eventually we were able to advance a Corsair excess microcatheter. We had loss of uh, wire here during the attempts to deliver balloons uh, through the lost stand. And then uh, we were able to get the 1.0 balloon a little further down, but not all the way through. And in the process, actually, we did lose this time guide and guide wire position. So at this point, uh, we were not feeling very well because we have significant issues. We have a lost stand into the graft. We have been unable to deliver a balloon into this LED lesion that we had balloon, and we were concerned that it might have acute vessel closure. So in order to attempt this, we decided to not place a stand to cover the lost stand because then delivery would have been extremely hard. But instead, we were able to advance the guideliner using the inch warming technique around the lost stand. So now we have better support because the guide extension is past anastomosis. Fortunately, we did not have ischemia. And then through this, we were able to deliver more equipment. So this time we were actually able to deliver a 2.5 by 15 millimeter drag eluting stand, and then another 2.75 by 33 millimeter drag eluting stand through this deeply seated uh, guide liner. Uh, we did jail our wire, but we were able to retrieve it by advancing another microcaster over the jailed uh, guide wire and pulling gently. We post-dilated the stand, and then we did achieve a nice result. We have good timothy flow into the LED. The lesion is well expanded, and there is still good flow into the second diagonal branch. At this point, we want to make sure that the lost stand would not migrate distally, so we did place a 3.5 by 18 millimeter drag eluting stand into the diagonal essentially, covering the crust uh, previously lost stand. And this was the final result. We do have again good flow into the graft, no injury on the graft. We do have uh, good flow into this um, uh, distal segment of the diagonal branch. We do have good flow into the LED. There were several lessons from this case. The first one is the potentially detrimental effect of significant tortuosity and calcification. This caused difficulty crossing with the guide wire, the previously placed stand. This caused difficulty with equipment delivery. This also predisposed to stand loss. What to do when a stand is lost? One option is to retrieve it. The other option is to leave it in situ and either deploy it or crush it and place another stand uh, outside, essentially fixing the stand within the vessel wall. In this particular case, we tried to retrieve it with a small balloon technique, but we were unable to retrieve it. 
presumably because the stand was significantly deformed. We tried to expand it, but probably because it was at an angulation, we were unable to cross with larger balloons, so could not expand the lost stand. And in the process of getting equipment through the stand, we actually lost wire position. So we had to rewire on the side of the lost stand, then we crossed the stand, and then what made the difference in this case is advancing the guide extension, the guide liner, past the distal anastomosis of the radial graft, around the lost and crushed stent. And after doing that, we were able to deliver stents to the LAD and get a nice result. At the end, we did place a stent around the previously lost and deformed stent to ensure that this stent would not migrate later on down to the LAD. Thank you.